In today's episode, Major Plot Hole will share with you a topic that is both full of controversy and intrigue. The subject grants life. It's something that was fought over, brought Europe out of a constant state of famine, and nearly single-handedly helped bring us into the industrial era of agriculture. We fought wars to keep our supplies filled with it. Without it, thousands die. An entire country has shriveled to the shadow of its former self. That's right. We're talking about... Wait. Oh, this can't be right. The potato? Seriously? That's your topic this week? That's right. Today, we're talking about the wondrous food, the potato. Without it, we wouldn't have french fries, tater tots... Hash browns, baked potatoes, mashed potatoes, wouldn't need gravy, holiday dinners would look kind of sad, and what would we put our sour cream and garlic on? First, we need to travel back in time to 2500 BC, where the oldest potato records we have come from. Potato fossils, as it's a root-based plant, are very hard to come by, but it's a safe bet that the people of the Andes Mountains in modern-day Peru may have been using the potato as a food source for as early as 5000 BC-ish. Of course, the potato we know and love today isn't the same potato they had. It's adapted, of course. Then every single village had its own special brand of potato. Then the Spaniards came and took some potatoes back home with them. The plant grew well everywhere. However, it was considered to be bland and meh at best by some people, so it wasn't good enough for the aristocracy. And when the aristocrats and leaders said, well, it's not good enough for me, you plebeians eat it. Well, people didn't like that much either. Most places actually refused to serve potatoes, saying it was only good for pig feed. Then the Prussian king, Frederick the Great, was all, eat it or get out and forced his populace to use the potato as a staple crop. But it wasn't until the Frenchman, by the name of Antoine Augustine Parmentier, that it actually began to gain popularity. See, Antoine was a soldier for France, and while his country was at war with Prussia, he got captured and was forced to eat nothing but potatoes during his imprisonment. Cheesy Pete's major plot hole, I hear you say. Not eating anything but one particular food will make you ill. Antoine Parmentier thought that too, but Random suddenly an expert on all things nutritional, internet viewer, potatoes are another story. Antoine was a trained pharmacist, so he was surprised that he was in good health by the end of all his stents in prison just by eating mainly potatoes. He became a nutritional chemist after the war ended in 1763 and devoted the rest of his life to furthering the usage of the potato. He's kind of the Johnny Appleseed of the potato. After Louis XVI was crowned King of France in 1775, he lifted the price regulations on grain and allowed merchants to price their product at whatever they wanted. Once it was lifted, bread prices shot up, and the people started fighting amongst themselves, sparking multiple incidents and in multiple villages and towns. Antoine convinced the aristocracy of France that if the citizens saw how awesome potatoes were, the fighting would cease. He set up one publicity stunt after another, including a potato dinner to high society guests. The story goes that Thomas Jefferson was so enamored with the potato that he introduced French fries to the US. Supposedly, this persuaded the king and queen to wear potato blossoms, Marie Antoinette sporting a potato blossom in her hair and King Louis in his lapel. Even after the French aristocracy was overthrown, Antoine kept working hard to get whoever was in charge to promote the potato. But it was during the siege of the Paris Commune in 1795 that the Republicans of France finally embraced the potato for it was this beloved tuber that saved them from starvation. Up to this point, mind you, famine was a constant worry in the world. France alone had suffered 40 famines, not including local city famines in less than 300 years. And that's over one famine every decade. And other countries weren't that better off. The potato single-handedly brought an end to that. To a point where roughly 40% of all Irish 
ate no solid food other than potatoes, with similar numbers across the rest of Europe. As the potato literally became a staple food in both the European and American continents, it also was introduced in Africa, Asia, and variants of the potato have been introduced to Australia. But then the European governments were no longer suffering from famine. We're all, holy crap, this is nice. How do we keep this up? And boosting production is always the answer. And therein lies the new problem. By the 1840s, the Peruvians had boosted the production of their crops by using guano, bird and or bat poop, that they would collect off of small rocky islands where seagulls and other birds had gathered. This fertilizer was so good that it allowed their potatoes to produce far more than anyone else. And now everyone wanted some, but Peru had cornered the market and were charging mucho dinero for the poop. To try and counteract the monopoly of guano fertilizer held by Peru, the USA issued the Guano Islands Act in 1856, which basically said that if any US citizen found an island that had poop on it and no one else owned that island or was living there, then they could take that island and its poop for the US. Roughly 98 poop producing islands were claimed this way. Spain went the other direction. And in 1864, while the USA was busy with the whole Civil War thing, Spain invaded Peru and took the Chincha Islands, which the Chincha Islands are literally three giant slabs of granite out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, off of the coast of Peru. There's no food. There's nothing out there. Just bird crap. Because of their shenanigans, no one in South America would allow the Spaniards to dock and resupply their ships. Realizing they done goofed, the Spanish had to give up the islands and retreat back to the Philippines. Well, thanks to the mad rush of the guano and shipping it, something really bad cropped up. The world was introduced to Phythothora infestans, aka the potato blight, which is native to Peru and was also introduced to the rest of the world via what we suspect were shipments of guano fertilizer. Potato blight is a fungi that preys on members of the nightshade family, especially tomatoes and potatoes. In 1845, West Flanders got infected. By August, it hit Paris. Weeks later, potatoes all over the Netherlands, Germany, Denmark, and England were dying because of it. In Ireland, it was reported that 2.1 million acres of potatoes had been planted that year. In two months, the potato blight wiped out 35% of the crop of that year. The second year, it was worse. The attack on the potato, Ireland's main staple crop, didn't wind down until seven years later, and by then a million or more Irish had died. Another two million had left the country. To this day, Ireland has the distinction of being the only country in Europe to have a smaller population now than it did 150 years ago. In the 1980s, new strains of potato blight found their way into Europe and America. In 2009, potato blight reared its ugly head again, wiping out most of the potatoes and tomatoes on the east coast of the U.S. Though this was mostly due to the fact that it was unseasonably wet very early on, and the potato blight grew far quicker and more rapidly than farmers were prepared for. And that's not the only threat. There's also the Colorado potato beetle. Highly resistant to all forms of insecticide and pesticide, there's no good way to control them. There's such a threat to the potato crops that if you find one in the UK, you're required to report it to the Department of Environment, Food, and Rural Affairs. Yet despite these threats, the potato has endured to become the fifth most important crop in the world market today, right after wheat, corn, rice, and sugarcane. Potatoes are also a big part of our culture, as we have sayings like couch potato to refer to someone who watches TV all day. We refer to something insignificant as small potatoes, and the crux of a matter as the meat and potatoes. As a staple food in all six of the Earth's populated continents, you can't escape it. The potato is literally everywhere. So, what's your thoughts on a potato? What's your favorite use of a potato? Did I miss one? Obviously, I have my opinion on the subject, but I'd like to hear yours. So, leave a comment below, and don't forget to like and subscribe.